how you doing? This is Dom Dalmaso. I am your host for The Logos Project, and this podcast aims at going back in history, back in time, and trying to understand better all these famous thinkers, writers, uh, and cultures. Um, and hopefully you'll have just as much fun as we are having on this podcast uh, by hopping in that, that, what's the name of that car from Back to the Future? Ah, dang. The one... Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Get in that baby and get back to ancient Greece, first century, uh, Palestine, uh, Middle Ages, and just read what these people have to say, know more about the surroundings, their culture, and understand how they saw the world, and also tie everything together and see the causal patterns in history, specifically when it comes to human thought. What have we been thinking since the moment that we have been able to think? And when is that? And uh, many, many things like this we're going to tackle. Uh, I often have my friend Sam come on and we have conversations. Uh, Sometimes I'll have guests that I interview, uh, but most of the time I'll be uh, expositing something very specific from a specific thinker, a specific text, um, or a type of literature and anyway we have we have a blast and I'm glad you're here and uh, I'm looking forward to sharing this much fun with you and thanks for uh, coming along we'll see you guys uh, in in the next uh, upcoming weeks this week uh, we're gonna take a look at the origins of the Old Testament and um, this is an older episode, so you're going to have to forgive a few blunders I make. For example, I call the Essenes the Essenes. This was several months ago before I took a deep dive in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So I look forward to an in-depth episode on that topic. Um, without further ado, here is uh, this week's episode. Enjoy. <laughs> Where do the Jewish texts known as the Old Testament come from? Who wrote them? When were they written? Unfortunately, a mischaracterization is often shared by many uneducated adherents to what is now called the Bible, a word which simply means scroll. This mischaracterization is that the Old Testament is a compendium of books that has fallen from heaven and has been given to us directly so that we may know what God wants from us. However, another mischaracterization is that the Old Testament is a random selection of primitive texts written by a random selection of primitive people that has been codified by authoritarian institutional religions. So, what is the Old Testament? Well, the the Old Testament is a selection of very specific ancient texts written by the same ethnic group over a large period of time. It was written within specific Jewish traditions and was preserved over centuries. The Old Testament is an immensely self-referential compendium of texts. It has been edited and added to over a span of centuries. You might say that it was written forward and backward at the same time. It was written within an overarching tradition proper to the Jewish people. This tradition can be divided into subcategories, categories that move more and more gradually toward a specific vision by drawing from each other. In fact, there is nothing quite like the Old Testament in the history of human literature, hence its prominence in said history. The immense level of sophistication in the Old Testament will become more and more apparent as we make our way through its corpus. Okay, first, what is the Old Testament? I will refrain from addressing the issue of canon and leave that for an entirely separate episode. For this episode, I'm going to look at the Hebrew canon, even though I am an adherent to the Catholic canon, which has more books. Why? Because I want to avoid the inherent controversy in the making of a statement without having explained why I believe my position to be reasonable. So, Protestant and Jewish listeners, please stick around. Catholic listeners, we will get there. The Old Testament, according to the Hebrew canon, and of course, they would not call it the Old Testament, for obvious reasons, is composed of three main categories which are identified by the acronym Tanakh. 
Tanakh stands for Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, the Law, the Prophets, and the Writings. There are five books of the Torah, Law. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There's eight books of the Nevi'im, Prophets. Joshua, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and the Twelve Minor Prophets. And there's 11 books of the Ketuvim, or writings. Ruth, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Lamentations, and Daniel. These are the divisions and the layout of the Tanakh. We get this from what is called the Masoretic Text, among other sources. We will explain what that is in a minute. The Septuagint has different divisions and a different layout. It has also more books. We will also explain what the Septuagint is shortly. For now, it is important to know that history has given us two main versions of the manuscripts of the Old Testament, the Masoretic Text and the Septuagint. When scholars study the Old Testament, they are the two go-to first sources, even though many others are utilized. A good scholar will cross-reference all the available first sources. Now, when we say first sources, we do not mean the actual scrolls written or edited by the authors and or editors. To hold such a high standard for the veracity of historical characters and events would lead to the denial of the sources used for the existence, deeds, and words of about every important historical character and event. Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, the Gallic Wars, Hannibal, the Crusades, the Hundred Years' War, Shakespeare, and many other historical characters and events. The Masoretic Text is the oldest Hebrew manuscript of the Old Testament. It is from around the 9th century Common Era. The Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, with more books. It is from around the 1st century before Common Era. For the sake of this podcast, I'd like to introduce my own layout of the Old Testament. The reason for this is that I plan to go through the entire Tanakh in this podcast, in the order that I have read and studied it, at least hopefully. After this, I plan to go through the Deuterocanon, as well as the Apocrypha and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The podcast will culminate in the 27 undisputed books of the Christian New Testament. I'm usually all over the place, so there might be New Testament episodes before we get to the end. The categories that I will use are as follows. The Pentateuch, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The History, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther. The Wisdom Literature, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Songs. And finally, the Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Naum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and finally Malachi. This is the classification that I will be following. Separate episodes will be dedicated to the Deuterocanonical books, which I hold to be canon, to the Apocryphal books, to the Dead Sea Scrolls, and to what scholarship considers to be the various sources of all these texts. Namely, the JEDP sources, the Deuteronomic History, the Chronicler, and the Essenes. I will explain what these are in just a second. First, I would like to include a disclaimer. I am neither adhering to nor denying the validity of the existence of these sources. My opinions will become clear about them as we progress along the podcast. JEDP is an acronym which stands for Yahwist, Elohist, Deuteronomist, and Priestly. These are the four supposed sources behind a large portion of the Old Testament. The Deuteronomistic history is a delineation of texts which begins with the book of Deuteronomy and ends with the book of Kings. These books are attributed to a single source, not necessarily a single author or editor. The Chronicler is the source thought to be behind the redaction and editing of the book of Chronicles. And finally, the Essenes are a Jewish monastic order that are believed to be behind the redaction of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, enough said of authorship, editorialship, and sources. Finally, 
I'd like to add that we will have numerous episodes on special themes, events, characters, and ideas, etc. This podcast reflects what goes on inside my mind, so do not expect too much order. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, Don't forget, you can leave a review, and if you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash the logos project l-o-g-o-s project um thanks for tuning in guys and uh, we'll see you next week